Hey everybody, welcome to Kongs of Bueller. As always, I am Bueller, but I'm not alone. I got a couple guests here. I got Luke Lieberman. How you doing today? Yeah, man. Nice to have you. And I also got Ryan uh, Silbert. Is that correct? That's me. I got it. I, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm names. We'll talk about Bill Sinkevich later, and I, I'll probably get that wrong again a few times. Nope, hey. nope. We got it so far. You got it. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will not say it the same way twice, just so you know. <laughs> but that's always the case. But we're here to talk about Alliance Orphans, or Stan Lee's Alliance Orphans, and I'm going to give you guys the floor right away because there's a Kickstarter going on right now. We've only got a couple days left, so we got to get to the point really quick. So I'll let you guys kind of give me the elevator pitch uh, for uh, what's coming out. All right. Well, um, Alliances, thank you for having us, is a new universe of characters we debuted a couple of years ago, um, co-created by myself, Luke, and Stan, the man Lee, uh, over the course of many, like a decade of work was put into creating uh, what is a large library of characters and storylines. And we've only just scratched the surface. We've got A Trick of Light. That was a New York Times bestseller that Audible uh, Studios released with Yara Shahidi reading. We had A New Reality with Will Wheaton reading. Um, and now this is our most recent project, which is Orphans, which blasts us into the cosmos. It's a jumping on point for new readers. It's our first graphic novel. And uh, uniquely, the painted pages by Bill, um, are being spun off into a Ashcan special edition called Trader's Revenge, which is the first appearance of, I would say, about a dozen characters, Luke, and probably the most important, which is the inventor and Nia. Yeah, it's a jumping on point. We, we wanted some, we wanted to create, especially because we're jumping into the comic book medium for the first time on this project, we wanted to create something um, that audiences could just jump into without being having a PhD in the Alliance's universe, although that stuff is all there and it is all lovely if you'd like to check it out. Um, but Alliance's Orphans deals with um, the, the first uh, 15 or so, 16 pages is a prologue that we wrote specifically with Stan. And it was actually one of the first things we wrote in this um, universe. And um, the art is the interiors uh, is done by Bill Sienkiewicz, as well as the cover to the book is, is Bill's as well. And that um, prologue introduces you to the inventor, who is kind of the original orphan. And what an orphan is, is uh, you have the evil hive, which is this alien species that is wiping out, taking over planets in this corner of the galaxy. And when they wipe out a planet, they kill all the intelligent species except for one. They leave one alive as a kind of genetic artifact. And uh, this one person is the last of their kind. They're a lone survivor of their species, and they're an orphan. And um, the other orphans that we meet are this kind of team, this sort of found family that the inventor leaves behind after the prologue, which leads us into the rest of the book uh, that Ryan and I wrote based on material that we worked on with Stan. And uh, the art there is done by, uh, by Sleeman Kondrasky. Nice. So uh, you mentioned Stan Lee, and obviously his name is on the book. When you have Stan Lee's name on the book, it's going to draw some attention. Um, you said the first 15 pages were written together with Stan Lee. When, where was the timeline when that was written? Well, we started really developing this with him, I'm going to say around 2014, I want to say. Um, there was like a large world building um, process, and I've gone into this in other podcasts and over the years. But uh, essentially, I... I I met Stan in, uh, at film school. He gave me my first job out on the West Coast when I moved to California. Um, and I, I worked for him until I, I left to relaunch the Red Sonja franchise. And um, he was a family friend. And uh, I would always keep in touch with him. You know, we were close. Um, and around 2014, uh, in one of our conversations, we started talking specifically about the Internet. And because we, when the Internet first hit the scene, Stan was really jazzed about it. He he saw it as a way to like communicate ideas, break down barriers for people to understand each other. You know, it was a way for people in one part of the world to share ideas with people in another part of the world instantaneously. And he thought it was going to create empathy and and allow us to sort of connect and understand each other. Oh, and then, the opposite. Right. And then 2014, you sort of sitting with Stan and he's ruminating over how you know, it, it had all this potential as a technology, but when you put it in people's hands, you can't really control how they used it. And it was suddenly became this tool for division and misinformation and tribalization and setting us against each other. And it sort of did the opposite of help us understand each other. And, um, and, and I don't think anyone really predicted that when it first came out. I don't think anyone understood that that's what was going to happen. 
And um, it gave us the sort of germ of this idea about the inventor, who's the main character in the prologue. And um, I, I walked out and I said, the inventor, let me back up, the inventor sort of, the concept of his character is that like, he just, he's a genius and he creates things because it's possible to create them. You know, and a lot of times the, the people who invent, um, not just inventions, but also stories, but and specifically here, we're talking about technology. They create it just with the sort of idea and the dream of what's possible. And they, they never really, they, they either don't or can't foresee how it will actually be turned into a weapon or otherwise misused by the people who will eventually come to inherit it. And um, it was so you know, sort of started out with that idea about the internet, but then you just sort of take that idea and expand on it and blow it up. And so, you know, cause it's not just the internet that's been that way. There've been all kinds of inventions over the years and will yeah. be into the future. And um, artificial intelligence, which the inventor in the prologue, he creates Nia, who's this uh, alien artificial intelligence, um, is was another kind of kind of the obvious next thing, right? This invention that was going to be created because it was possible, and because you know some people will say, well, if I don't create it, somebody else will, and yet you can't really predict where that's going to go. You know, um, we're just sort of breaking the barrier because we can. We're not necessarily thinking, you know, that there's going to be ramifications that we're not going to foresee. Yeah. Some of, honestly, with AI, some of it has been foseen. <laughs> you know, I mean, Terminator Two did yeah. come out, so, but, um, but not anyway. in the way that, not in the way that actually we use AI today, which is actually, I think, curiously how Stan was considering it, which was how does human interaction with a computer work? And like in yeah. Terminator, it's 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 a embodied robot right or like whatever cyborg uh mechanism he is but like in in this instance we're dealing with like a computer that it can alter the reality in which you live and that's what during this dungeons and dragons play session that we talk about with stan mm -hmm. over many years because it was like really like just coming up with characters and themes and ideas i you know i call them like the what if sessions because stan would ask questions like what if this, what if that, what if that? And he asked this question that is the centerpiece for the universe. When people ask us what is what, what Alliances is about, you know, he recorded um, an introduction to uh, A Trick of Light where he, he talks about this, which is what is more real, the world we're born into or the one we create for ourselves? And this idea of creation, the act of creation is something that in all of our stories is kind of the great kind of Pandora's box that is opened. And in Orphans, it's in this case, the inventor is playing with a natural, um, what, what would you call that, uh, Luke? A black hole? <laughs> like a, a natural well, entity, a natural event? Things. I mean, yeah we're, yeah, we're going, so that's not in the prologue, but in the rest of the, I mean, well, it well, is actually. It is in the prologue. Does, yeah, it does start in the prologue. But he's, uh, one of his inventions, he's drawing energy from a black hole in order to, um, in order to uh, empower the hive sort of network throughout uh, the galaxy. And, and in so doing, he creates a feedback loop in the black hole that causes it to destabilize and twist time and space and, and threaten the galaxy. So one of the things yeah. they have to do is fix the, the mammoth, which is that, that device. But that's just sort of one device. He's, he creates a, a number of devices, Nia, yeah. some others that we see kind of play out through there. And, and, Go ahead, Ryan. Let me jump in. No, each story, each story has that though. You know, New yeah. Reality has the human grounded aspect of that, where huma a human creates what he sees as a utopian mm -hmm. online culture, sort of like an early MySpace prodigy AOL kind of thing. And then what happens? The, you know, what are the ramifications of that? You know, these yeah. are these are all the kinds of things we're exploring. Um, you know, in our in our universe. It sounds yeah, well, like the inventor uh, kind of has some similarities to Stan Lee himself. I mean, we always did sort of imagine yeah. that if we did like an animation or something, Stan would do the voice. Yeah. I mean, that was that was definitely that was definitely part of the thought process. And Stan's a creator, right? He is. Um, it's a really so yeah, cool, right, right connection conclusion. Yeah. No, and that and that is part of where for us, it's like you know, these unique singular inventors, but what you find in orphans is that's going to take a team, a family to really mm -hmm. bring kind of order to the reality of the universe. And that's mm -hmm. something I think Stan 
you know, he loved people. He loved communication. He loved, uh, you know, connectivity. It's to soapboxes, right? You yeah. know? So yeah. like, well, that, that's, that's usually thing. the solution. The solution for the problems created by the technology are, are people connecting with each other and working together. Yeah. That's usually yeah. the way to solve the problem that's created. Yeah. Um, certainly in the Alliance of Stories. Yeah. So you got uh, Bill Sienkiewicz. Hopefully I got it right again. Uh, <laughs> to do the first, uh, fifth, what is it, 15 pages? Something like that. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. have him memorized. Um, had, yeah. had he ever uh, worked on Stan's uh, work before? Is no, that was part of. I think that was part of the because um, they, they kind of just missed each other, so to speak, in terms of their yeah. hands-on work and at Marvel. And I think that was part of the attraction for Bill was the nice. ability to work on you know because he hadn't before. Um, and he was, by the way, he was great. To, I mean, he was. You know, we wanted. We weren't really going to make a comic until we knew we had the right artists yeah. to realize it. Um, and particularly the Trader's Revenge story, which is the prologue that we're talking about. It's called Trader's Revenge. Collectors will recognize where that title comes from. But um, that story in particular, because Stan was personally involved in like writing the script, um, we wanted to make sure that we had, you know, Bill, basically. I mean, we, we basically just went to our publisher, Nick, and said, Please get us Bill for this. And yeah, he Nick's agreed. Able to, Nick's able to pull a lot of hats out of his or a lot of rabbits out of his hat. Yes, he is a bit of a magician. He is. <laughs> He's been around a long time. But I'll, I'll say, like, I'm new. I'm new to the business, like, completely as a collector. I'm old school, but like as a creator, totally new. And you know, this is one of the things that I think is so beautiful about the relationship that Nick has with creators and that Luke has established with creators through Red Sonia is like they just are incredible collaborators. So creators like are like would love working with the two of them. And, you know, I think when it came down to, you know, getting Bill on, you know, Luke and Nick were certainly, you know, a huge component of that and their track record. You had mentioned sitting down and having a uh, stand in the room or on the phone or whatever, talking about this and then writing it or whatnot. Obviously he's no longer with us. And so that bullpen is a little bit smaller with just the two of you is, do you sit there and talk about these things? I mean, what would Stan say? What would Stan do? Is that on your mind when you're putting these yeah. stories together? Well, look, it's an education when you work with him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially we were younger and he was this sort of Gandalfian wizened sort of creator that had been around since the beginning of time, so to speak. So like there was a, a, an education that just came as part of that. And he just kind of threw it off without even really thinking twice. I mean, I don't know how consciously he was trying to educate us just so much as it just kind of, you know, pearl, pearls drop out of his pockets as he, as you're working with them. But um, in, in terms of, uh, in terms of what we do now, what would say, I mean, fortunately we have a lot of development, so we kind of knew, you know, what the, we have a plan. So we kind of know what the plan is. You know, Stan had a very specific style, so we're not trying to ape his style. I'll put it that way. Um, you know, because you, yeah. you can't you can't do that properly. We, we're just we're just doing our own uh, styles, but it's all based on the stuff that we that we developed. With. But this yeah. is, you know, ultimately, I think, you know, this comes out of um, years of work between Luke and Stan. But you know, Luke and Stan had a very close relationship. And, and actually, Luke recorded a student documentary of Stan you know, giving incredible principles that are still foundational to like all storytellers, but certainly for Luke and I, and mm -hmm. it's a real gift. And one of those things appears in the Disney documentary, which is we're all products mm -hmm. of the, uh, the work we've experienced or something like that. And, you know, we are products of, because of our interests, Stan's work, you know? So like, oh, you can't help oh, but be influenced by Stan. You butcher my story. Um, the the what he's talking about is uh, the day I met Stan. I was an NYU film student, and I and I interviewed him for my student documentary about him. And um, the uh, the people who produced the documentary on uh, Disney Plus licensed a couple audio clips that I recorded in that student documentary um, from Stan, and it's in like the opening two minutes. And one of them nice. is, uh, "We're all us. We're all uh, a product of all the things we've experienced, seen, read, and heard in our lives. And there was another bit about perseverance. And if you think you got something, you just can't give up. You got to keep going, hoping sooner or later, someone will recognize what you've done. And a key, it's, it's kind of tripping me out. Just like when they license, like they called me and asked for 
a minute of audio clips. It didn't even tell me specifically which one it was going to be or where it was going to be used. So I didn't really know until I saw the documentary, mm -hmm. but the fact that they use it in like the opening montage, it's like kind of the first, there's like one clip of him back in the day talking and then they do the picture montage and there's yeah. audio clips of, and it's like the first one. Um, and I just feel like if, if anybody told Stan when these students were like interviewing him, that this was going to be the opening to his Disney documentary in 20 some odd years, it probably would have blown his mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's quite a uh, nice student documentary you got to make. And that's not a, I'm, I'm oh, not yeah. a bad thing to do. Yeah, I know. And they gave me, they gave me an A minus on it cause I turned it in late, but oh, I only had, Stan, I only had Stan when I had Stan. So like I did, I did the interview when he was in town. That was it. Like it wasn't, yeah, what do you if want? If they only knew that it would be on Disney Plus <laughs> later, they would have given you the A plus. Yeah. 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 So let me ask you, is the story done? Is, the, is there more story to be told on this? Oh yeah. There's more. No, we're, yeah. we're, this is, this is actually kind of the launching off point orphans is of the kind of a trick of light, new reality. We're on earth. And then there was this whole part of the story that takes place, you know, but they involve aliens coming from afar. So now we're going to afar from where they came from, whence they came and, and learning that part of the story. So this is kind of the launching off part uh, point for that piece of it. Nice. Well, before we go here, I want to get back to the Kickstarter campaign itself. So is there any uh, special uh, tiers, I guess you'd say on the Kickstarter? There are, but Ryan's going to be better at this than I am. <laughs> okay, Ryan, you're on the clock. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, I mean, specifically for this Kickstarter, and I mentioned this, that the Bill Sinkovich um, cover uh, is is with no – no is virgin mm -hmm. on the um, on the Kickstarter. So that's uniquely to this Kickstarter. There's some signed material from Luke, Bill, and I. Um, but, you know, we're really excited by Trader's mm -hmm. Revenge, which for the yeah. first time is going to be – published separately from orphans it's always been part of the orphans original graphic novel and now we've created for fans uniquely for kickstarter a special edition comic book and that's where we think this is like sort of like the essence of alliances and this is the first appearance of many many characters it's you know an exciting beautiful ride scripted by stan painted beautifully by bill like this is for you know collectors i think the most kind of unique proposition but the graphic novel of course you know we want people to be able to experience both so now we can do that thanks to kickstarter nice. yeah um but i want to tell luke real quick because luke you know you're associated with red sonia and that's how a lot of people know you and i don't know if you, you're aware of this but uh i made my first appearance on a cover of red sonia red sonia there you are that. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Holy cow! No, you did a, uh, in the go Wait, why, why isn't your head the one on the pike? That's what I want to. You know. <laughs> uh, I don't think you would have went with that, but uh, <laughs> thank you to Dan Jurgens who uh, did this one for me. We did a Kickstarter a few years ago, or Indiegogo, I think it was. But yeah, I made my very first appearance on a Red Sonia uh, comic book, cool. uh, Mars Attacks, and stuff like that. So I forever connected with you my friend as well so there you go. that's awesome um yeah. we're we are having our 50th anniversary of the character this year so i do want to i want to quickly plug my panel because we're yes. uh friday uh 21st at uh comic-con at 11 30 in room 5 a b we're doing a 50th anniversary celebration we're going to show some exclusive footage from the film we're going to have jimmy palmiotti amanda carter amy chu dan Panosian, uh and i'm going to be moderating um and you know they we're gonna talk about the history of the character we're gonna talk about all things red sonia i'm i'm quite excited about it people should come nice how long is the panel is it an hour long yeah i think they're kind of all standard hour okay. hour standard because like my panel starts at noon on friday so Whoa. uh you could come to my panel late after you go to his panel <laughs> it's totally fine because he'll probably have uh, some really cool stuff more cool stuff than what i got to share with you guys <laughs> But, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys coming on the channel. I know you guys are doing a lot today promoting this. And like we said in the beginning, there's only a couple days left for this uh, Kickstarter campaign. I'll put a link down below so everyone can check it out. Go support this. It sounds pretty good, man. I'm excited. I'm, I, I hope I get a copy myself. I need to get off the road and actually get some mail. And uh, when I do, maybe I'll have a copy waiting for me. But, gentlemen, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. And thank you, uh, have a great day.